Okay, so as you can see, I got all my colors out here, and I'm going to be using smaller brushes since I'm not uh, working on a rather large painting here. But um, here we've got the original photo of this guy, and you know, a lot of darks going on here. Uh, the fence, the cans, a lot of cast shadows with the sun coming from the upper right. Uh, we've got a lot going on back here. Uh, what I did was I took that photo, lightened it up a little bit so we could see some of those details. Uh, with some of this stuff, you may choose to use some liquid frisket to mask out some of these little white slats here. Uh, that's fine. Or even on some of the, uh, some of the details on the garbage cans, that's fine. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and paint around all of that for right now. So I've got a palette of colors out here, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, ultramarine. Uh, for my for my earth colors, we've got a lot of lot of earth colors: yellow ochre, gamboge, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, raw umber, burnt sienna, and sepia. Raw umber and sepia are pretty similar. Uh, burnt umber is a little darker version of the burnt sienna, especially depending on the brand that you have. So, so what we're going to do is work on these using basically three brushes: a uh, small half inch flat, a uh, number eight round, and a number four round. I might do a few little details with my liner brush later on, but we'll see how that goes. So what I'm going to do is start blocking in some of these larger shapes with some color here. Um, we're using the photo, I'm using the photo that basically the 30 year old photo, these buildings don't quite look that way anymore, so, but we're going to paint it as it was. I'm going to start with some yellow ochre here. Gonna edit that out later. Mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. Just a little bit of alizarin crimson with my yellow ochre. Fair amount of water, starting with a flat brush. And I'm working wet onto dry with this. Painting around the wood light wood that's here, the, the plywood that's in the front. Okay, back here. Now, I didn't use any frisket on this, so... Down here, I'll keep some white highlights. That there's, a, there's some some weeds and brush back here. I'll just paint around some of that. I'll fill that in later. Details. Okay. Also, I'm gonna use this color for the side of the building here. Here I'll paint through it though. It's pretty dark back there actually. Paint in between the wood slits. Okay. Now what I might also do is, in this case with with the wood in the front here. Um, Pretty harsh sunlight. I'm actually gonna just, just a little touch of lemon yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and add into this mix. Just to cool it off a little bit. And just drag the brush over the tooth of the paper here. Same within the shadow areas, the whole. Okay. 
a little bit of a dry brush technique. Not much water on the brush right now. And filling in the wood that's behind the garbage can here. Okay. For now, this building, the side over here, I'm going to leave white. Um, I like to have some pretty strong contrast of white throughout this painting. Uh, in the foreground, on the cans, a little bit on the fence. There's going to be some here, some cast shadow. Uh, you know, this is a big A-frame building, but the sun is showing a little bit over it. You know, I think we have like, a, we might have like a two in the afternoon type of a sun. Where we're looking, I think we're looking east actually here. I'm going to move to my round brush now, my number eight. Uh, I'm going to take a little burnt umber here. I'm going to darken this up a little bit more, a little bit of sepia. Right now I'm just starting with my browns, but I am going to add some additional color to these. I'm going to start painting in some of my darker areas here. I want to be a little careful here. I don't want to lose too much of my shapes. Okay. Pencil line is kind of light in some areas, so I want to be careful I don't lose that. Okay. Dark up here. You know, when I drop in a dark up here and it, and it spreads gives a soft edge, that's okay. I still see my pencil line back here and I'll reinforce some of that later. So I want to paint. Careful I don't fill in these wires. green porch going on back up here. Okay. Mix in a little ultramarine blue while it's still wet. Drop into some of these darks up here. porch. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pretty dark. Mm -hmm. Let's really darken it up here. let some of this dry a little bit. I'm going to address the fence on the right here. I'm going to address that with some sepia and some lizard and crimson. And actually a little bit of gamboge. I'll put these colors out. I want to actually start with a little bit of a, a warm tone. To this again working wet out to dry. 
these are the pots there's, there's, you see some plants or something mm -hmm. something's in there so I'll try to paint some of that in later so I'm starting with this Gamboge tone here and I'm going to start painting in the fence slats. Okay. Now again, this is, you know, here's another nice reason why we don't we don't need to have this perfectly drawn out. I mean, some of it's going to be overlapping a little, and it gives it gives it kind of a nice loose feel. Now we can drop in some of the while it's still wet, some of the sepia and a little bit of ultramarine, and watch how it carries. Well, the water carries some of this pigment, which is really nice. nice. And some of that gamboge will show through. I'm going to drop in a little bit more of alizarin in here. Okay. Just thicken up some of the slats a little bit. dark back there so careful around the can these crossbars I want to crop in a little extra dark in them There we go. So now we've got three colors in these really. A nice warm gamboge, a, and then we move to the cooler uh, alizarin crimson, and then a little bit of sepia. I'll even, for a couple darker areas and stronger silhouettes, I'll even throw in a little, little ultramarine blue in there. Just in a couple spots here. I hit it. Watching the top of my can here. I didn't mess that off, so I got to paint around it. Okay. Let's close that up a little bit. And just darken this back here a little bit more. All right. Pretty much how I want that. I'm going to take a uh, smaller brush. Now, and I'm going to dress the uh, the porch in the back. Lots of greens back there, so I'm going to grab a little cerulean blue. Mix up with some gamboge. Start filling in some of this back here. If you want to make this, this is a little on the olive side, if you want to Kind of cool it off a little bit, add a little bit of ultramarine.
trying to be careful, want to maintain some of these highlights here. Okay. And we gotta pan in a few of the, the vertical structures here. He's drawn in, but I pretty much know looking at the photo where I'm at with this. So we got the center beam that's solid, and then we just again we, we be careful and leave those nice white verticals in the middle there. The shadow that's behind it. Here, there's a little bit of a, a glow mm -hmm. up here. I'm going to drop in, mixing some Gamboge and Alizarin Crimson. Darks a little more. Now I'm with a small brush I can get in some of the details here, work on these contrasts. Okay, and the door yeah, there's a door up there. Gotta watch it, paint around that guy. Some of this dries. When some of this dries a little bit more. I'll lift a little bit of a highlight out of there. I can even use my flat brush for that. There we go. Okay, there is a little bit of shadow coming across the, the right side of the building here. And for that, I'm just going to sort of mix a um, little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of all those are in kind of get a um, almost well, too, too brown, but. purplish color up here. So leave that. window paint that in a little bit of 
cerulean here. You can even leave a couple little white highlights on there, which are always nice. And the frame, there's a real light frame on this. When that when this dries up, I'll paint the inside of the frame of the window. Let me see if I can brush out some of this color that's on here. If we have a, like a real light gray over here, that's okay, but it's not going to be, there's not going to be much to it. I mean, we're talking not even a 10% color. That's, this is all going to lighten up quite a bit. So, now I'm going to go back to my flat brush, take some of this alizarin crimson, a little bit of the sepia, darken this a little bit more. I want to paint around this window a little bit that's on the side. I want to, I want to show some of that that's back there, so be a little careful. don't want to lose my gutter too much either. And then just finally soften this edge here. Okay, and I'll take some of that and do some of that over here also. You know, this we don't have to soften completely. We can let some of the brushwork show. It gives it a little movement to what looks like kind of a dull flat surface over there. There we go. That helps. Now, I'll let this dry a little bit more, strengthen up some of these darks as I need to later on. Right now, I want to address some of the fence down here a little bit. The shadows. What color is this? Is, this is sepia. Uh, it's, it's, it's watered down right now. It's pretty light. Uh, I don't want this completely dark yet. Not until I'm ready to darken certain areas. So I'm using a sepia, but I'm using it and watering it down pretty, pretty strong. Actually, what I'll do is use my, well, I'll keep using the same brush. We've got this nice sh shadow that's here on the ground. I'm using some ultramarine blue. Got a little bit of uh, sepia here. The shadow we don't want to necessarily be the same. value or the same color even throughout. You know, it's pretty strong in a couple areas here. some of these brushes here so we'll start to address that too yeah. starts to actually blend in with the fence so we'll start bringing some of it up into some of the shadows here of the fence ties it together for your fence you don't want floating away on you so Okay. 
some of these shadows, you know, the tops of the fence, they get a little they get a little lighter here. While we're at it, let's get some greens going. Working with a small round brush still, and start painting in some of the weeds and brush that are in the background here. What color did you like? Uh, this I'm using, uh, mixing some different greens here, some cerulean and gamboge. Okay. I'll mix a little as as I uh, to the tops. I'll start mixing in a little more lemon yellow. No. Mm. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Well, let's bring some of these darks into. Into the brush. Start bringing it together. We don't want this brush to look like 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 a giant, you know, sponge. I mean, it's That shape. A little, bit of, a little bit of blue back there for your darks. Spend a little time with this. Okay. Take my flat brush. I want to just want to put a final wash back here, just to kind of darken a little bit more of that. Okay. There's a few darks I want to start addressing behind. Between the slats, background. It's not as dark, dark, but you know, if I decide to make them darker, I will. I don't want to make them too dark right now. Watch out. Now we start framing out the garbage cans a little bit here, so I want to be a little careful. Because we're going to save those guys for last. Here. We left the garbage cans out in the back over here, so we're going to darken the ground a little bit more. A couple of spots anyway. Okay. There's Again, with a little ultramarine and sepia, there's a little shadow back here. Address some of that.
that actually connects to our fence a little bit, so we're going to tie that in. What, what did you use for that shadow? The shadow is ultramarine and sepia. Okay. Right near where the fence and the ground touch, I'm darkening up the most there. Mm -hmm. There we go. And actually, I'm going to take a little sepia and reinforce, since this is lightened up on me, some of these vertical. I'm just connecting some of the values here a little bit more. I want them to be a little darker in a few spots. There we go. Okay. Now I can go ahead and take a little ultramarine, start darkening up some of these shadows here under the, the vertical or the horizontal slat of wood. And I see where I want to darken up some of my verticals here. Breaking up some of my line work because I don't want this to appear to be outlined, but with the construction of this, it does look like there's a little bit of outlining going on. Just don't make each, you know, if you have successive lines next to each other, just like here, don't make them all the same. Looks like we can start darkening up back here now. Nice, pulls the eye. To the side a little bit more. Okay. And we do have a thin dark here. There. Let's just take a look at where we have some additional darks and fill those values in. Looking at the photo. There we are. And I'll go ahead and throw in just a few little darks over the window here just to find it a little bit more. Not, not too much. Same with our gutter. Got this window back here, pretty dark. Okay. That's actually a little bit of want some of that gutter. Take my flat brush now. Create some dark darks. Here. I want these to be stronger on the left. I'm actually going to carry some of that into the shadow here on the ground. Okay. Back here a little bit. Altering the pressure of my brush. I'll just 
Clean the brush off. And bring these colors into the shadows a little bit more in the foreground. There we go. Even on the fence. Bring some of that up. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and work on the garbage cans here before I decide how much darker I want to go with some of my darks in the background here. We we'll start on the can on the left. I'm going to go with burnt sienna for that guy. Using my larger round brush, I'll then move to my smaller one. What I do, this is purely wet onto dry, and I'm going to do a mixture of soft and hard edges on this. So I'm looking at where some of my darks are, some of my shadows, dropping color into there. Move to the smaller brush, a little bit of raw umber actually. We're going to use a raw umber and burnt umber here. Some nice earth tones and some of these old cans that you just don't see anymore. Long gone. You're using the plastic ones now. Yeah, yeah. There's a few of these left, few holdouts. Gotta look for them though. Important, keep some whites on these guys. Very important. So, okay. Now my few dark darks in here, little 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 ultramarine blue, just to right under the, the rim, right under the. Underneath the shadow, I'm going to dark it up a little bit more behind it. Here. Now I'm just jumping around a little bit. determining what additional darks I want to bring into the picture. You know, these are round cylindrical objects. This guy. This guy here is going to have a little, little Prussian blue in him, but we're going to gray it down. A little bit of sepia. You know, this is nice with these cans because you can, you know, do things where you can, you know, the, the local color of the can can have a distinct, each could have its own distinct color, but just look at the nature of these things. You can drop in all kinds of different rust and, you know, if you want to add a little bit of the salt texture in here or something else, you know, these things, that's why I think these things were so beautiful when I used to see them around a lot. They're so much fun because you could add in complementary colors, you create... You know, really give them 
their own unique one for their own hair. Let's see. A little bit of cast shadow on this. Okay. You want to move the thing up a little bit so you can see the bottom. So you can see there the bottom. There we go. We got. Oh, we got. Oh, we got to be careful here. This Watch this. Yeah. Give me some more blood sienna. There's actually some lettering on some of this, which is kind of neat to, you know, the address. Used to spray all over these things. Mm -hmm. I can carry some of that color into. Blue. I can also lift out. sepia you know you, even when you mix in some of the ultramarine this is when you know you've got like objects like this especially next to each other when there's a lot of intense sunlight you're gonna get a lot of bounced light from one object to the next so we want to want to try and hold some reflections here you don't want to lose too much of that Crimson, get kind of a reddish, orange tone to it. sides, a little light in the middle. Not the inside. It's almost like at eye level. You can't see inside these things too, too much. There we go. dark over here on the left side. Let's go ahead and that dark. back and forth a little bit with some of these. Adding in little little touches of dark in some and more in others.
strengthen some of this up. That's what I'm doing. There. Even with my burnt sienna, this guy over here. As it dries, as it goes into a damp stage and then dries even a little further, we could, you know, it lightens up on us so we know we can go in and add some more of these stronger saturated colors. Give it a little more strength. Give these, you know, they're, they're round metal cylindrical objects. They're heavy. They've got some weight to them. So we want them to, you know, to look like that. Okay, back to my round brush. Now I'm going to start reinforcing some of the, the darks in the background a little bit. back here. Paint a little lighter value back here. Same with down here. I want to be very mindful of where our whites actually are. Now, where some of our additional details are. Uh, we want to, let's see here, I'll make sure. Make sure we've got little things like cables. Some more wiring. Here. I'm even going to darken the side of this building a little bit more. Okay. Let's push these slats forward a little bit. Make sure to give them a little additional texture. Just so they're not, you know, the same lightness all over. I'll break, even break this up a little bit. There's a real light wash. I want to just put the foreground here. See that? a little bit more back here. Taking some of the darker values I have already on the palette here, blues and browns, and just just 
this way I'm pushing the frame of the woodwork forward a little bit more, creating a little bit more movement in some of these larger spaces. For the most part, we're there. Force this edge a little bit. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Do the shadow right there? Not this right here. I'm gonna leave no. that out. I'm gonna leave that out. This there was a shadow here in the photo that comes from outside somewhere else, but what I'm going to do is creating a little 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 tension here, sort of creating the, strengthening the edge of this garbage can mm -hmm. right here, so I like that. Reinforce some of the structure of this. Realizing that it needs there's a few more darks. That's just a shadow. So that should be a little harder edge. There we are. Okay. Look at this guy. Can you do any of this stuff on the planters? Give you a little bit of plants that needs in the plant boxes, sure. Yeah. Because our green over here isn't the only place where there is any, so mm -hmm. let's go ahead and little lemon yellow. Little, little ultramarine blue. This is nice, it brings over some of the color that's over here also. Mm -hmm. Using just the round brush for this, there's not, not a whole lot going on with this stuff. This isn't botanical garden time. We want to suggest color your notes. There. Couple areas where I put this. I want to strengthen up some darks. Side of the building. Continue to just. Sprinkle up a few darks here under the porch a little bit. Soften up some of this back here. And just darken up some of this down here.
Okay. Final. Final decks. Okay, guys. I think we're there, huh? Mm -hmm. I think we're there. See what we have. All right. We got it. <laughs>